Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today we're going to be talking about poly low tunnels and season extension. And I'll be showing you guys how you can build your own. I'll be giving you guys a lot of different tips and tricks to make it and kind of the different options that we have as small farmers to or gardeners to build our own season extension. I'll be talking about shade cloth as well as frost blankets and how we can use those in different situations as well. So here's an example. This is season extension. The white blankets that you see are called frost blankets. They come in different weights or thicknesses. You can get up to like six degrees of temperature protection. Um, then you get less light. These are about three to four degrees of temperature protection and it's 85% light transmittance. So I don't lose too much of my light. And having the plants under here is gonna give a lot more heat. So even though we're not getting as much light in the winter, we'll at least get a good amount of heat and that's gonna help speed up the growing process for us. So here you can see I've got lettuce and kale. It's much warmer under here. So poly low tunnels for season extension is a way that you can help keep your crops warmer in the winter and reduce frost damage. And in the summer, you can put shade cloth on them to prevent bolting and just cool down the crops overall. And you just create, you're creating a mini microclimate for your plants. So let me show you how these are built. So to build the tunnels, you use 10 foot sections of half inch EM conduit. It's the same type of conduit that they use for running electrical wire. So you buy these, they're about a dollar and a half each. Then you'll need a bar bender. And I got my bar bender from bootstrapfarmer.com. They're one of my favorite farm suppliers and uh, where I'd recommend getting your season extension and propagation materials from. It's all set up at the right angle and everything for you. It's really easy to use it. So you'll need the bar bender and you need the EM conduit. And here's what it looks like when you're all finished. Now the other thing that you wanna do when you're bending all these bars, you wanna make sure you're doing it on a table so that as you're bending the bar, everything's staying in the same angle and you're not getting a twist in the bar. Now the other way that farmers make their poly low tunnels is to use, I believe it's nine gauge wire so it's a very, it's a pretty thick gauged wire that you can bend and shove down into the ground. And that works great as well. And I know many farmers who use it. Uh, for me, I've tried both and I just really prefer the EM conduit because it's stronger and you need less of the hoops to make a complete structure. So if I was using those nine gauge wires, I'd need like twice the amount of hoops to have the same strength. Uh, the EM conduit also goes up higher. You can have taller plants in there. It'd be really annoying with the nine gauge wire because there's so many that when I'm running the greens harvester, those poles would get in the way a lot more than just my four poles will. And then another thing with those the smaller gauge wire, it's more work in bending over to take the structure off to put it together and all of that. Also, the EM conduit goes over two beds at one time. The nine gauge wire only does one bed at a time. But there's lots of reasons why you might want to use the nine gauge wire. It just depends on your context and what you're doing. And it works great as well. So, you know, look at some other videos of how people have done it using that wire. I think Richard Perkins uses the wire. And so lots of successful farmers use either. So you can go either way. Just kind of think about your context and what you're growing and what would be best for you. With my bender bar, they recommend making a nine inch mark on your pole. So I've marked, made a mark on each side of these poles. So now, like I said earlier, make sure that you are bending this on top of a table. So you'll just line up the mark with the edge. It doesn't have to be exact. Now the next really important thing, you wanna make sure that when you're bending it, the pipe is sitting inside of the seam right here. It's nice and even. If you go off and you pull it back, it's gonna start putting a weird twist into it. So make sure it's in there. And then you're just gonna pull the bar back until it becomes flush. And I'll usually kind of stop there. I don't, you can go a little bit farther, but that's basically it. You don't wanna go beyond that. If you do, you're gonna put some weird kinks into the pipe. Then you're gonna shift the pipe forward 
about a foot and a half. Make sure it's in that seam and then bend it again. Okay, I'm pulling it until I can see the pipe touching the seam and then I stop. Forward, bend it. And then when you get to the end, Bootstrap Farmer gives you this big like breaker bar basically. You don't need to use this thing. You can just do it by hand. But if you need a little extra strength, you can slap that on there. That leaves us with a bar that looks like this. So you can see the legs aren't completely straight down. So then what I do is to mold out the bend of the pipe. You know, I went like this. Then you pull it out, right? Put it in the opposite direction and go in about that same nine inches. Let's give it a little bit of a bend. Switch to the other leg. And I'm bending this towards the camera. So then now I've got the, you know, I've got the nice half circle shape and then the legs themselves just go straight down. And then that makes it way easier to fit into the ground and especially if you have skinnier pathways like I do, you don't want these legs to be bending out at all because it's gonna take up some more area. All right, so that's how you bend the bar. It's really easy. So you just do that and you make a whole bunch of them. So the first thing that we do is roll it out and cut it to length. And if I was gonna do a lot of these on a larger scale and I had standardized beds, I'd figure out that perfect length of my cloth, cut it, then I'd go mass produce a whole bunch of them, then come with those mass produced frost blankets, come out and set them out onto your field. So when you have another person, it's nice because you can put on these little clips on each side and walk down together, making sure it's really tight on both sides all the way down. If you do it by yourself, it's still completely possible. It's just a little bit more tricky. So now I've got these clips. I got these from Bootstrap Farmer and they're awesome. So you need two hands to take them off because they're pretty strong. If you have windy situations, you would really want this to be strong, but it's nice because you can just pop them on and off really quick and they have a lot of strength even in wind. And they even allow you, if you want to make it weaker, you can take these clips out. But I found even in my very soft wind area, that grip isn't enough to hold them. So I keep the clips on. Another thing that you'll see people do is they will attach a rope to the top of these. And you can see Curtis Stone's video all about that. You'll run a rope from the edge line here. You'll tie it to a piece of rebar, stake it into the ground and then run that rope all the way across the other side to the other side and you wrap that rope around each bar so that it creates a very strong structure so that there is wind, it's not gonna blow it over. I've found that just shoving the poles into the ground is enough strength for me, but that may not work out for some people. So I just wanted to let you know that's another way to do it to make it stronger. Obviously, I've got a pathway here, so I can't be tying rebar down like this. It's gonna be in my way. So I have to come up with a little different solution. Or what you can do, what I did before, is I've tied a line and put the rebar straight down to the ground and it doesn't go into your pathway. Um, but this works really well for me since I don't have much wind at all. And you can see that those clips are doing a good job of holding the frost blanket to the ground. So besides just protecting your crops from the heat and preventing them to bolt, another cool way to use shade cloth is to slow down growth of a plant. So if you're seeing here, I've got some mustard green here and some beet greens here, and they are now at the size that I would wanna harvest them, especially the beet greens. These mustards are even a little bit too big for a salad mix, so I may just have to end up selling them as a side green. I'm gonna use the shade cloth, put it over, and it's gonna slow down the growth on these guys because my market's on Friday, so it'll help slow them down. I should have put it on probably two days ago, that would have been a little smarter and it would have slowed down the growth this entire week for me. And I haven't had it on recently just because we've had temperatures in the 80s. And I've noticed that for my salad mixes, if as long as the temperatures are in the 80s, the taste and flavor is fine. 
and all of that. So another tip for shade cloth, you can use it to slow down growth. And this could even be done in your nursery as well. So it's a great little technique. Jared Smith's farm, Jared's Real Food. And I know that a lot of people have problems with rabbits and squirrels and gophers and that's something that he has a huge problem with out here. So I just want to tell you a little bit about how he's tackling that. To keep out the rabbits and the squirrels, he uses, this is a knit shade cloth. So he's just using the shade cloth as an insect and animal netting. It doesn't stop small insects like aphids or flies or, you know, little things. But it would stop larger moths, any uh, caterpillar laying bugs, most of them, and, all, you know, large beetles, things like that. And then it keeps also keeps the rabbits out because he puts rocks all around it. So it keeps those guys out of there. So it's really good. All right, you guys, that's it for today's episode on creating your own poly low tunnels and setting up season extension for yourself. Hope this was really helpful to show you some different options of what's available so you can pick the best thing for your certain situation. Season extension is just such a great way to create a microclimate allowing you to grow things out of season a little bit. So it's a way that you can show up to a market earlier with tomatoes or, or earlier with certain vegetables or you can keep selling lettuce deeper into summer when you've got the shade cloth on there. So it's pretty cool. There are cheap and great systems to set up so that they'll make your farm or your garden uh, either more profitable or you'll be able to grow more food for longer times.